this is going to be seven ways to become more productive. Let me know in the comments if when you get to the end of a week and you reflect on the week that you've been through, do you ever get to that place where you look back and you think, I started with the intentions of being way more productive. I feel like I've been pretty busy, but I've just not been as productive as I set out to be. Let me know in the comments if that is you. Um, if that is you, I'm more than sure you are not alone. I certainly uh, have done that many, many, many times. And these are going to be seven of the things that I really focus on when it comes to doubling down on productivity. Um, one thing I've learned over my journey of building businesses and personal development and things like that is this school of thought of just being really, really busy and working exceptionally hard and making huge sacrifices and so on. That is just a school of thought I do not subscribe to. Now, it's important that I say, yeah, from time to time, we got to do what we got to do in simple terms. You know, we, sometimes we're going to be busy. Sometimes we've got to make sacrifices. Sometimes that's the season we're in. It is what it is. But I really, really hope tonight that if you're the person that feels like, do you know what? I am tired of just being busy and I really want to be way more productive. I hope that tonight, even if there's just one of these seven things that I go through, I hope there's something you can take away that you find useful and that is going to help you. Okay, without further ado, let's dive into it. So the first thing that can help you become more productive is moving, okay? That is about to sound a little bit weird. What are you on about? What, moving house? No, no, no. I just be moving your body, right? And what I would say to everybody listening now or watching is the earlier you can move your body, the better. Something that a lot of people think um, is in order to get started, they need some motivation, right? Like, oh, they might have a, a, a to-do list or some things that they want to get done. And they kind of think, oh, but I'm just not motivated. I just feel tired. I'm demotivated, so on and so forth. And they think I will wait till I feel more motivated. This is quite a common thing. When in actual reality, the majority of the time is action creates more action. And that's what creates motivation. It's not the other way around, right? Let me know in the chat if this resonates. Have you found that sometimes a big one can be the gym? You don't have any motivation to go to the gym, but you said you was gonna, so you just go anywhere. And once you're there and you're five, 10 minutes in and you've taken action, that creates momentum. And the momentum creates motivation to keep on moving forward. So that's the first thing that I want to make super clear is if you are waiting to be motivated to get shit done, you might be waiting quite a long time. So we've got to flip reverse that. And sometimes we've just got to act and move without motivation. So that's why I say like a big tip and anybody, I can see Nicola's here. Hey, Nicola. I can see obviously Paris is here. Anybody that works with me or has worked with me will know. That's a big thing that I'm an advocate of is get your body moving as early as possible. But here's the other thing that I would say with that is keep your body moving as often as possible throughout the day. Because when you're in action, it creates more action. You release endorphins. You feel slightly different to how you would if you're just sat not moving. So if needs be where you can, if you can, you know, take calls whilst moving. I do it quite a lot. Like I might be on Zoom calls where I have to be sat because I've got a notepad and pen and so on. But then I might be like, right, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to walk I'm going to go for a walk and I'm going to ring people that I need to ring and I'm going to do it whilst I'm walking. So the more the, the moral of the kind of step number one story is the more you physically move, the more you're going to want to do. And that's going to then increase the chances of you being productive, getting shit done and ultimately um, achieving the things that you want to achieve. So that's the first step to productivity. If you're somebody who's quite sedentary, spends a lot of your day sat down, whether it be sat in a car traveling, sat in an office, things like that, that generally is going to lead to those feelings of like stagnation, tiredness, and then that you're going to be demotivated. And then that's that might mean that you know, you work at a slower pace, you're not ticking as many boxes, you're not getting as much done, and it's kind of an ongoing cycle. So step number one, move your body as early as possible and as often as possible. Step number two is find ways that you can double up on tasks. Okay. Very, very simple, but very effective for me. Often when I'm, I've just said one there, when I'm walking, I might take a call at the same time. Um, I'm, when I'm driving, I might listen to a podcast. When I'm cooking, I might listen to an audio book. The more that you can be learning 
or executing on something whilst doing another task, the more productive you're going to be at the end of the day. One trick that I have when listening to any audio, whether it be voice notes from work colleagues or clients, whether it be an audio book that I'm listening to, whether it be a podcast that I'm listening to, I speed them up. We've got the, the access to that, right, on all these kind of uh, platforms now that you can turn like, I would turn the podcast or the audio book to like one and a quarter speed. Um, the voice notes I listen to are usually one and a half, sometimes you know, double speed, those kind of things. So that's a way of getting through more quickly. But also if you're listening whilst cooking or listening whilst driving, listening whilst walking, listening while training, you're going to double up on things. So that's the second step I would say. If you feel you're not being as productive as you want to be, find the ways you can double up on tasks. If you've got something quite simple, like I've said, driving, cooking, walking, you know, being on a treadmill, those kind of things, Are you utilizing that time to also learn or deal with emails, voice notes, so on and so forth? I also want to caveat that to say, I do that really often, but I don't do it all the time. Sometimes when driving, walking and so on, when I know I'm being really, really busy and I am actually being productive, not just busy, sometimes my mind gets a little fuzzy and a little busy and I need that walk or that drive or that time cooking to just listen to nothing. So let me know in the comments as well, if that's something you find. Um, And I I am a big advocate of that. So I'm not saying always fill all your time by multitasking and doubling up on things. But what I am saying is recognize where there is the space to get more in and then equally allow yourself when you know that you're on that edge of maybe just doing a little bit too much, allow yourself that little bit of time. Just go for that walk and listen to the birds, listen to the fresh air, take some deep breaths, like focus on gratitude, all these kind of things are things that I regularly do as well. Okay, number three, again, Nicola, Paris, anybody else watching who has worked with me or is a client of mine know that I literally go on about this all the time. It's something I call the PDS model. That's something that I created, but there's something that um, is more commonly known as time blocking. So I'm going to go a little bit more into depth on this because, again, I know I've covered it surface level quite a lot, but I'm going to give uh, some extra things to think about. Time blocking, PDS model, you know, in a nutshell, rather than having to-do lists, it's about scheduling your days where you are time sensitive and goal specific. That's the thing to think about. So 6 a.m. till 6.15 a.m., what specifically do you want to achieve? 6.15 till 6.30, what specifically do you want to achieve? I have found this now in the last seven years to be such a more effective way of planning my days, of reducing overwhelm, of feeling clarity, of being present in the moment, and ultimately being more productive in my days and my weeks, rather than just having a generalized to-do list where you're like, oh, I just need to get all this done today. Often, Um, we're not clear on how long tasks take and we don't get done what we wanted to get done in the day. And then that moves on to the next day and then the next day, and then we might be demotivated. So it gets pushed to the next day by being a little bit more specific with your schedules. I have found that this is one of the best ways to increase productivity, but I want to go one step further. One thing that I would say is there's a quote they call eat the frog. And ultimately that is about finding the tasks within that schedule the, or, or should I say to-do list as that's how it starts. You know, you just write a to-do list initially. What are the things when you look at that list that you least want to do, but no, you have to? Like really important tasks that you just are putting off. They're the things I would advocate getting in the schedule as early as possible, okay? And that's what they mean by eat the frog. Kind of my interpretation, it's the thing that looks as disgusting that, you know, you want to procrastinate on, you don't want to do, the thing you least want to do. Get that in as early as possible because if you get that in nice and early, you're going to feel super proud of yourself. Again, that's going to create a bit of momentum and then that's going to see you through usually getting more done. Whereas if you pick an easy task nice and early, and then you feel a bit tired after doing something easy, and then you look at the overwhelming task, chances are you won't get it done. And it's going to get moved to the next day, to the next day, to the next day. And again, you're going to feel this pressure that you you know you could have been way more productive. Something else I want to say about time blocking is testing your energy. So we all know our body rewards us for routine, right? So as often as possible, seven days a week, if you can sleep at the same hours, Uh, sorry, at the same time for the same amount of time and get up at the same time, 
and do things, you know, whether it be exercising and training and eating, if you can have things set so that you do stuff generally as best as possible, as often as possible at the same times, your body's going to reward you for that, right? So for me, that's the first step. Um, if you want to start to be healthier and happier, more productive and so on, have routines and be disciplined about those routines. But then as you start to do that, my advice is analyze those routines, right? So naturally, we're all going to have different points in the day where we have more energy. And this is what I would also just add to when it looks at your scheduling your days out, be mindful of that. So it's like, for example, I've tested this over the years and I know generally speaking, I have energy highs around about 7, 7.30 a.m. until around about 10, 10.30 a.m. So quite often I will do things like um, my workouts. I'll do things like going live on Facebook and Instagram and promoting what I'm doing. I may have coaching calls that are quite important around those hours. Generally, that's what I'll look as best as I can to schedule in is my high value, important tasks that require a lot of energy and focus. I then also know I roughly start to have another spike around about 6 p.m. to sort of 8 p.m. Um, which is why I'm here. It's quarter past eight. Uh, sorry, until about 8.39 p.m., I was going to say, which is why I'm here um, at, you know, eight o'clock during this live. So I know, generally speaking, they're the times of day where I'm at optimum energy. Now, obviously, it fluctuates. It's not always bang on. But the more that I'm in tune with having a, a specific routine, the more that that's quite accurate. And so knowing that really informs me to think, right, when I'm scheduling my days, the thing of more low value and those kind of tasks that are not as important or maybe don't require so much energy, I'm going to put generally in those time slots where I know my energy dips a little more. The things that are higher value and require more energy, that's where I'm going to put them. So this is, again, about not just having a general to-do list. It's about really understanding yourself, understanding your energy levels, and making sure that you schedule in a way that works in alignment with you, your tasks, um, so that you can be as productive as possible. The fourth thing that is so important and fully kind of follows on from the point that I've just made is schedule regular breaks. I think, again, there's this myth in personal development. And I think a lot of coaches, a lot of quote unquote influencers and gurus and these people that we see on Instagram trying to paint this perfect picture, I think a lot of them are guilty for making a lot of us think that we have to be like a high, like a high performer is somebody who's just energetic all day. They get up earlier than everybody else. They stay up later than everybody else. They do more than everybody else. They go work seven days a week when everybody else only works five. And there's this kind of misrepresentation that I think people are doing to make them seem superhuman so they can charge more money to coach you and so on. But it's BS. It's bullshit. I don't think it's realistic. Um, I don't think it's sustainable, even if you can do it for a short period of time. And I don't think it's healthy, right? So if you want to be productive, remember, productivity is not about being busy, right? It's about being productive, which means you need energy, you need clarity, you need focus, and you need to be sharp, you need to be switched on. You cannot be operating at your best and be your most productive if you're just working, 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 working. So taking regular breaks and with those regular, and this is throughout the day, by the way. So like it might be every half an hour, every hour, every couple of hours, taking regular breaks where you genuinely switch off. So here's the real key. I think that's going to be most useful for a lot of you where you're not looking at your phone, right? So if you've worked solid for an hour or 45 minutes on Zoom, and then you've got five, 10 minutes where you've scheduled in, right, I'm going to be disciplined. This is time I've scheduled for a break. Don't then just scroll through TikTok or scroll through your emails. That's not a break. Your brain is still on. It's still consuming. So if you want to be super productive, use that time to just switch off from everything. Get out. You know, get some fresh air. Like I said in point number one, move your body. Do some breath work. Do some meditation. Maybe just lie down, close your eyes, and just fully, fully rest. Switch your brain off. Breathe and be calm. Doing that for five, 10 minutes, every hour, every half an hour, every couple of hours, again, test this. Everybody's going to be different. 
I see, so, like, I've done it before when I'm coaching people and I just do calls back to back to back to back. And it's like the second, third call in, I'm like, Whew, I've got to really focus now to keep, you know, tuned into the client because otherwise I can start being like, whoa, I, I've just, I'm not listening to what they've said. And that is not, you know, a good service that I want to pride myself on. So now I don't do stuff back to back. At maximum, I'll do two calls back to back and a break. And then I might do another two calls back to back and then a break. And I make sure that in that break, some of that time might be emails and voice notes and WhatsApps and what have you. But I will make sure at least five minutes minimum, sometimes 10, everything goes away and I just breathe. I go for a walk. I've got a dance studio here in my offices. Sometimes I just lie on my back, close my eyes and listen to my breath. It's amazing. And just doing that, once you've done that, like sometimes it's not even like five minutes. Sometimes it's just three. After three minutes of committing to just closing your eyes and breathing, I go like, wow, woo, like I'm back. If I was just starting to feel a little sleepy, a little tired, suddenly, boom, I'm back. I'm ready to go again. So step number four, take regular short breaks. The fifth one, which is something I didn't subscribe to or really believe for quite some time, but when I, when I started doing it, the impact was so powerful. And that is to take days where you're completely switched off from work. So not just, like I said, their regular breaks, but I think it was like 2014, something like that. I got to a stage where I was working seven days a week. I would not take holidays because I used to have this belief. And again, let me know in the comments if anyone else has had this or does have this, especially for business owners and people that are self-employed and so on. I used to have this limiting belief that if I take a whole week off or weekend off, or fortnight away, that is going to be an opportunity for the competition to get ahead and I'm going to lose out. And this was a genuine fear of mine back in 2014 when I was building my businesses. Man, I was so wrong. Because again, what was happening is I was just super, super busy, but I wasn't operating at the highest level and I wasn't therefore being as productive as I could be. Now, I regularly take days off. Now I regularly have weekends off. Now I regularly have weeks away, 10 days off and things like that, where I, you know, you fully, fully switch off. You don't even think about your business. You don't even think about work. You don't even think about being productive. And what that does is it enables me when I do come back to work, I feel so refreshed. I feel re-energized, refocused, and I actually feel really motivated to get back stuck in and be sharp and, you know, be smashing my to-do lists and my targets and things like that versus just constantly putting yourself under pressure to be switched on, switched on, switched on. Our brains don't respond well to that. You know, it's not normal to always be having to do something. So that's a really important one that I think a lot of people neglect. And I, uh, I myself, you know, will admit I used to neglect um, but take days where you completely switch off. The sixth step to becoming more productive, set your life and environment up for action, not distraction. Again, this is huge. So we break this down into two environments. One is your physical environment. So where you're spending your time. And the other is your online environment. So what are you consuming online? So Straight away, let's dive into the online environment. Like a huge um, benefit to me is using on my phone the do not disturb settings. I don't know if any of you are aware of this, but you can set at certain times your phone to be on do not disturb. So that if you're doing important work where you need optimum focus and concentration, you can guarantee it's not going to be pinging off with loads of things that distract you. The other thing is um, linked to that is in each individual app, you can turn off notification settings so that not just having like do not disturb hours, just throughout the day, you don't get notified if you've had a Facebook um, request or inbox or an Instagram DM or anything like that, unless you choose to click on the app and look at your notifications. And that's been a game changer for me, for me that I only actually implemented earlier this year. So yeah, that is a big one, is looking at 
your um, your settings and making sure that it's not set up to distract you all day. The other thing is, who are you actually following online? Are you following accounts and people who inspire you to take action, who motivate you to turn action, to take action, sorry, who educate you on what's the best action to take? Or are you following people who completely distract you? They just make you start, I don't know, you end up watching cat videos that's of no use to the goals that you've set for yourself. And you end up finding yourself just scrolling through TikTok, watching all this stuff that is not inspiring you to take action. It's completely distracting. And then we've got the physical environment as well. When you look around where you spend most of your time, how have you set it up? Have you got physical triggers? Like, I don't know, a poster on the wall that is of an Xbox, or have you got DVDs out? Or, you know, have you got food out, like biscuit tins uh, and chocolate boxes and things like that? Things that are going to distract you that when things are getting tough and you're getting a little tired, you're going to start to see them and you're going to go, oh, actually, I'm just going to have a a tea break. I'm going to get a biscuit or a chocolate. I'm going to chill out. Or actually, do you know what? I'm going to play some Xbox for a bit. And before you know it, three, four hours have gone that, that by and you've not been productive. The flip side to that is, can you set your environment up to inspire you to take more action? Whether it be pictures that you have up, maybe motivational posters and quotes and things like that, maybe reminders, you know, what are the things that inspire you to take action? So that's the sixth one. Set up your life and your environment, both in person and online for action, not distraction. And that's going to help you keep moving forward. Okay. And the seventh and final step, something I'm talking about again, so often with a lot of people is delegation. Now, I know this isn't always easy. A lot of people find this tough. But if there's certain things that you're just not good at, you don't enjoy, you're really slow at doing, then that's the sort of stuff that's going to really hold you back from being productive. So where possible, as often as possible, look at that schedule, look at the things you write down initially on that to-do list and ask the question, is there somebody that I can get to do this who's better at it than me? Now, for those of you that are maybe in the early stages of building a business and things like that, it might be swapping favors for friends. So you might, for example, if you're a personal trainer, you might really quickly and easily be able to support a friend by doing a training plan for them. By writing, You might already have, you know, standard training plans that you can just make, you know, make a few adjustments, make it a little more bespoke. That might be something you charge a lot of money for. You could give it to that friend for free in exchange for them doing, I don't know, doing some sort of admin work for you, sorting out uh, your tax return, whatever it may be, that's one of their strengths and one of your weaknesses. So it's about as best as you can, you know, being resourceful, thinking outside of the box. If you don't have money, can you trade time by doing something you're quick, efficient and good at for something you're really, really slow and you don't enjoy and that holds you back? Remember, it's not about being busy. It's about being productive. As you grow a business and those kind of things, then it's about looking at, okay, can I outsource and pay people? Can I hire people? Can I hire a PA? Can I hire some staff, a sales team, a marketer, a videographer, all these kind of things? But this is something that is so useful if you want to be more productive and grow. But yet I see so many people fearful of doing because they're worried to ask or they're worried they don't have the money and they just end up getting bogged down and just trying really like to just do it all themselves. And it's so, so challenging. So I just want to put this reminder here, step number seven, do not do things alone. You know, get around the people that can help you, maybe trade trade skills, maybe hire somebody, you know, and again, hire a coach, hire a mentor, somebody who who can help look at where you're at and maybe give you some advice that you would have missed and that you might not have seen yourself. So there you go. That is the seven ways we can be more productive. Let me know whether you're live or watching on the replay. What is the most important one that you're going to take from this and that you're going to implement? Number one is about regular moving your body and ideally moving it as early as possible. Number one, uh, sorry, number two is about doubling up, finding things like when you're walking, driving, cooking. Can you be listening to audio? Can you be learning? Can you be doing another task at the same time? Number three is about time blocking your days, you know, finding what 
times your energy is highest and making sure your high priority tasks are blocked in then. Number four is regular short breaks throughout the day where you get off your phone. Number five is days when you're completely switched off. Number six is setting up your life and environment for action, not distraction. And number seven is to delegate. Do not try and do everything alone. Get some help. And that's going to help you be way more productive than if you were doing everything alone. All right, lots of love. Thank you, those that have joined me. Please do me a massive favor. I'd really, really appreciate it if you could share this video and maybe put a little caption as to why you think it will be useful that people listen. Um, but in the meantime, thank you so much. Lots of love to you all. Take care, and I'll see you all very soon.